TV Photo X 1.5 Jedi FX and welcome back to another video. Well, <clears throat> yes, I know it's a little bit long in the tooth since I did my last video for this channel, but as you might have to understand, school has to take priority. This is a hobby. But anyway, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, this uh, video is going to be a little bit about two things. Uh, first of all, uh, if you hear something humming in the background, it's because I have to have a fan here on the on the floor. I have the balcony door open. It is uh, mid-May now. It's May 15th. Uh, or what, what is it? No, no uh, May 16th. May 16th. Uh, but anyway, it is about 25 degrees Celsius here in Uppsala at the moment. It's beautiful spring outside and uh, yeah. Orange juice. Ah, mm. oh, damn it. <clears throat> but anyway, in other words, it is spring for real. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, wonderful weather. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, new books that I've been acquired, that I have acquired, I should probably say. Me, you don't know, yet again, put a picture of it up here. Uh, yeah, it's a second-hand chain and for students you get 10% off. First of all, Jugendstil. This uh, I bought for 79 Swedish kroner, about $7 or $8 uh, approximate. Uh, yeah, it's a great book about uh, stylistic prints that were made during the Jugen period. And it is completely wonderful. If I should take a uh, draw a, sim a parallel between these beautiful the only the only downside with this book is that it's uh, written in German uh, so it's a little bit uh, that's a little bit of a problem for me since I don't read German but the images that are depicted in this book that are posters and so on and you know advertisement from this period they are incredible and really great you know for when you i'm gonna have some b-roll of it up here but anyhow you, you know look at this i'm gonna put yeah put some b-roll on and they are incredible and if i should draw a parallel to a uh, contemporary artist, or not contemporary, he is uh, unfortunately deceased. But if you have seen some of the early Andy Warhol, uh, you know, work when he did the blotted line technique, when he did his shoes and so on, with a lot of candy floss colors, you can really see the similarities between his style and this Jürgen style. Also, what you can see is, uh, if you look at the Warhol's, uh, Warhol's uh, silkscreen prints, uh, you can see that he can offset the contours and so on. And uh, in some of these, you have a similar effect going on where contours are not black, but they can be any color. There was something here where they were, you know, uh, green. And yeah, those imperfections gives it that printed feel and that old school quality. But really great book. It only It's only known as Jugendstil Adley Hardy, it says uh, right there. But anyway, $8, great book for the money. Yeah, we're gonna do it like so. Next, Guthia, uh, Graphic, Graphics. Uh, this was uh, $10 or so, uh, 99 Swedish kroner. Uh, yeah, Guthia. And it is really interesting because it's about when artists make prints of their original work and you sell a limited run of prints. And it's a little bit, you know, this is a little bit of an artistic book, but I'm gonna put some B-roll of it as well. But they are really inspiring and so on. When you, If you take images and you want to color them either with something like airbrush or in uh, Photoshop. I would really recommend this book as an inspiration for, you know, playing with color and shapes, if you're into that. So yeah, second book from 
also Mirona, the ants, ants, uh, really great. Ants like in Ant-Man and not ants as in your mother's system or father's system. <clears throat> but anyway, those two. And then a third book that I managed to acquire, it is, uh, I've actually mentioned it to the prospect of it, uh, Learning Step by Step Airbrush. Uh, this book was made by Jack Buckham and uh, I paid 25 Swedish for $2.50. And this book is really interesting because it's a how-to book on learning techniques using airbrush. Or it also is referred to in this book as a retouch, the retouch, uh, you know, brush or whatever you want to call it. Uh, or rather the Swedish term, I don't know the English term. Uh, what was it now? Yeah, anyway, I can't find the word here and it's going to be taking too much time and I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and so on. But a little bit of B-roll from this as well. I mean, airbrush is a really cool medium, in my opinion, to work with. And this book actually has a little bit of uh, tutorials about how you can take photographs and first color in photographs that were black and white from the beginning how you can use airbrush to color them in. Uh, a little bit maybe like uh, all the famous, uh, oh, what is his name now again? I can see him here from, uh, Lennart Nilsson, his, his uh, work where, I would, think, I would think it's airbrushed in or colored in. It's about retouching uh, prints, you know, how to remove clouds and so on. And uh, also how to do some a little bit sci-fi, how to, you know, Take a cityscape and airbrush in maybe a flying saucer. So that's a little bit of interesting when it comes to this book. And then it, some general techniques and tips and tricks on how to use airbrush and how to do calligraphy and so on and how to make the objects look photorealistic and, uh, you know, clean and how to even uh, make a photo from scratch, uh, something like that, uh, some, you know. So in that aspect, I really, I really am a little bit interested in doing some work with airbrush in order to, you know, further my photographic skills. Excuse me. But anyway, since I'm here in Uppsala, I wanted to be able to go out and about with, ca with a camera and just take some photos. Normally I have the Topcon, which I have shown you in the past, the Unirex. Uh, I also have the F80, but I had this old school camera that I had in the back of my little collection. And uh, I had the problem that uh, a certain little plastic piece on the bottom that is supposed to be removed when you use a winder, motor winder, uh, that piece was missing, so you got light leakage into the film compartment and the problem was that that will expose the film. Not good. But anyway, what happened was that I went on eBay and I started to search for that little plastic piece and it it basically was super expensive. But then I started to think, you know, that piece was removed for the motor winder, so how much does a motor winder cost? And if you wanted something in you know, perfect condition. It was really expensive, but I found one in uh, from Spain actually that uh, was in not that good of condition, but fully functional and it was cheap. So I actually got that one. So uh, I would say that this is one of the cooler, cooler cam. The cool factor on this camera is high. While yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Here you go, the Nikon F3, and this is the original F3. It's not the high, it doesn't have the high point prism finder or anything. It's just the original version. Both of them, both them, the camera and the battery grip is a little bit banged up. The grip takes uh, eight uh, AA batteries. Uh, yeah, AA batteries. And uh, I'm using Class Olsen's uh, rechargeable batteries. So these are 2,300 milliamp hours. And 
Yeah, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. No, it can't be. So, yeah, there we go. You have two little red LEDs on the back side and you press this button to test that you have uh, juice in the batteries. But anyway, this camera when I bought it, it as I said, it didn't come with a little, you know, uh, plastic piece that is supposed to be put under the winding mechanism. And also, the rewind lever retaining, uh, you know, uh, spring was not, uh, was broken. So if uh, I turn the camera upside down, the re rewind crank will flop around. But fortunately, I thought about, should I get that fixed? No, I'll just get one of these Nikon uh, AS4 flash shoes and uh, voila. Now I, now I can do this about like uh, however I want it and uh, yeah, it works. And uh, currently on it, I have the Nikon, Nikon Series E 50mm f1.8. But I mean, this camera now weighs about the same as the Nikon F4 that I've shown in previous installments. But this camera, I've walked around a little bit in Uppsala and taken some street photos with this. It's non-conspicuous, it's really, you know, out there. But what I started to notice is that a lot of people, certainly older generation, gentlemen mostly, that I meet uh, when they see this camera, they really, you see that they have a little bit of a, you know, approving uh, glances, you know, they approve of this. So that's a little bit, you know, that's fun and all. But um, anyway, it's a beautiful camera to use. And I've used this with uh, some uh, different uh, lenses, some 135s, uh, you know, I try to, this might just be me being a stickler, but, uh, I try to have period correct uh, lenses for it. In other words, I'm using only manual focused lenses on it. I can put on the AF series lenses as well, but uh, I think that it looks a little bit more authentic in my opinion, but that just might be me being a stickler. Uh, for the moment I'm having, I'm having film in this camera at the moment and it's a Fuji Color C200, 36 exposures. And this camera, I, I bought the camera uh, almost two years ago, I believe. And then last year I got the motor grip and the little flash shoe. And, and, it, and it all works. It's, it has a little bit of quirks and so on. And then just for fun, I have one of these metal uh, soft triggers on it. Which can also be a little bit to protect the threads for... Uh, you know, uh, ex if you want to use the camera's main exposure. So what I've understood is that you can use both the trigger here, which you can put on locked, single and continuous. I don't remember the uh, frames per second that this camera gives you. But one thing that I know that a lot of people have uh, a little bit of trouble with this camera. Now it's obscured the red stripe here, which is Giugetto Giugaro, the Italian industrial designer who, is, who penned this beauty. But what I want to talk is that there's a little red button here by the prism finder, which is the illumination for the little liquid crystal display in the camera itself and also the little window here that illuminates the f-stop so you can see it in the viewfinder. Uh, in low light situations. A lot of people talk about that that will burn out or that that red button fails and so on. I've actually discovered one thing with, with my copy and uh, it is that if I just turn it on and try to illuminate it, uh, it doesn't work. What you have to do is half press one of the button, the shutter releases, in order for the meter to go online. So when the meter is online, then you can use the illumination. And that's a little bit of a quirk that uh, I just found out by accident. I thought mine was broken and then it started to work intermittently. But then I realized it was when I ever half pressed something and then tried to illuminate, then it worked. So it was a little bit of a quirk. 
But this thing, it weighs a ton. I have taken the camera strap from the F4 and put it here on the F3. So, and actually also I had a, we had a birthday in the, in the family not too long ago. And it turned out that one closer to me in my family had had uh, a, or rather has still, but doesn't use it, it sits in a drawer. Uh, that person in my family actually owns a Nikon F2. So I have a 4 and a 3 and another one in the family has an F2. And I think someone else in the family has an FE. Or extended family I should say. But anyway, it's a beautiful camera. I'm probably gonna put some black and white in this soon so I can do some home developing and uh, show you guys what this beautiful piece of kit can actually perform. So yeah, I thought that this will just, this is a non-scripted video, no real planning for it. It's basically filler so that uh, you guys can know that I am still still kicking it when it comes to photography and I'm not gonna end this channel anytime soon. It's just that priorities, as John Lennon famously said, life's what happens when you make other plans. So all in all, this is just a quick one from me. And as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. And I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye.